Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times, in the paradise of Ukiah, California here on this over-the-top gorgeous Sunday morning. That would be October 8th, 2017. So, uh, before I head out into the California wine country, the California wine country, I guess that might should be in my case, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to do what I do every Sunday morning. Now that miraculously I have managed to call up the internet here in 2017 in the Motel 6. Um, Sunday is when I bring you my doomsday sermon when your old doomsday preacher Hambone shares with you his new favorite Bible of the apocalypse. Now, unfortunately, I have not had time to crack a book in the past week, so... I oh, don't know. I've done it again, guys. I, I want to thank the Alert Tribes member who sent me this. And of course, once again, my old senior moment, uh, whoever you were, Alert Tribes member, I really appreciate you sending me uh, today's sermon. Actually, it was written last May and is just now coming to my attention. So if it's just now coming to my attention, imagine how many other people's attention on this planet has come to. And this is an article uh, or a study, whichever one you want to say, from the, let me put my we are photo so folks on, find the place for it, appearing in uh, the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of the United States of America. There you go. So uh, this is a peer-reviewed <coughs> journal, and this is was put together by my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero, Paul Ehrlich, and two other fellows whose names I don't know, Gerardo Ceballos, and Rodolfo Dirzo. Okay, so uh, I'm glad to see some Hispanics joining the conversation. And the conversation in this juicy article that will serve as my uh, sermon is the biological annihilation via the ongoing sixth mass extinction signaled by vertebrate population losses and declines, <clears throat> which is a very long-winded way of saying biological annihilation. There you go. Okay, and I'm going to put the link to this entire long study with all of its uh, points and and it's got all of its charts and graphs and illustrations. And I encourage you to spend an hour on this for anybody who does not understand the biological annihilation unfolding in the ongoing six mass extinction. Uh, maybe this will help you pull your head out of your ass. Uh, I'm going to put the link on here, but if you just want to sit around and listen to, to me read it, you're welcome to, and I'm not going to be able to read this whole thing. I'd be here an hour and a half, so we're just going to uh, read the top and the bottom, <clears throat> maybe a little bit out of the middle. Okay, they start out talking about the significance of the biological annihilation. What is the, why should we care? The strong focus on species extinction, a critical aspect of the contemporary pulse of biological extinction, leads to a common misimpression that Earth's biota, otherwise known as its web of life, is not immediately threatened, just slowly entering an episode of major biodiversity loss. This view overlooks the current 
trends of population declines within species. He's talking about the populations of animals within the total range of these species. This view overlooks the current trends of population declines and extinctions using a sample of 27,600 terrestrial vertebrate species, otherwise known as land-dwelling animals with a backbone, and a more detailed analysis of 177 mammal species, we show in, in this study the extremely high degree of population decay in vertebrates, even in common species of low concern. <clears throat> Dwindling population sizes and habitat range shrinkages amounts to a massive, a massive anthropogenic, otherwise known as man-made erosion of biodiversity and of the ecosystem services essential to civilization. This biological annihilation underlines the seriousness for humanity of Earth's ongoing sixth mass extinction event. There you go. So then they uh, sum it up in the abstract. So uh, I'm going to Good Lord, guys, this would take me two hours to read. I, I read every word of this on my big Saturday night. Uh, but we're going to read the, the abstract. <clears throat> and pretty much the abstract and the conclusions. Okay, the abstract. The population extinction pulse we describe here shows that Earth's Six mass extinction is more severe than perceived when looking exclusively at species extinctions. And I'm thinking you guys understand the difference between what he's talking about here. Uh, therefore, humanity needs to address anthropogenic population extirpation and decimation immediately. That conclusion is based on analyses of the numbers and degree of range contraction using a sample of these 27,600 vertebrate species, blah, blah, blah. We find that the rate of population loss in terrestrial vertebrates is extremely high even in these so-called species of low concern. Uh, in our sample, comprising nearly half of known vertebrate species, 32% are decreasing. That is, they have decreased in both population size and range. In the 177 mammals for which we have detailed data, all, every one of them, have lost 30% or more of their geographic ranges and more than 40% of the species have experienced severe population declines of over 80%. Our data indicate that beyond global species extinctions, Earth is experiencing a huge episode of population declines and extirpations, which will have negative cascading consequences on ecosystem functioning and services vital to sustaining human civilization. We describe this as a biological 
annihilation to highlight the current magnitude of Earth's ongoing sixth major extinction event. <clears throat> the loss of biological diversity is one of the most severe human calls to global environmental problems. Hundreds of species and myriad populations are being driven to extinction every year. From the perspective of geological time, Earth's richest biota ever, well, up until about 200 years ago, Earth's richest biota ever is already well into a sixth mass extinction episode. And then, uh, you, you know, they, they, they break, look at some of the past ones. Um, <clears throat> few realize that if subjected to the estimated background or normal extinction rate prevailing in the last 200 million years, these, these recent vertebrate species losses would have taken not one century, but up to 10,000 years to disappear. Uh, they take a nod towards looking at the ocean. And, and you know, just, just mentioning that the oceans are, are completely fucked uh, as well, but this study is just looking at animals walking around on the land. Um, let's see, so let's, uh, from the, pers as I say, I'm just jumping ahead. I really encourage you to read this uh, yourself. Uh, from the perspective of a human lifetime, it is difficult to appreciate the current magnitude of species extinctions. Uh, a, a rate of two vertebrate species extinctions per year does not generate enough public concern, especially because many of these species going extinct were obscure and had limited ranges. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, guys, as I say, I've just got to, uh, I'm, I'm pretty much just going to read the first sentence of each paragraph all during the middle. Uh, otherwise, I'd be here for the rest of the day. So what I'm going to do is uh, just kind of read the introductory sentence to each paragraph, and then they break all of that down, and then we will get to the conclusion. Oh boy, the... Some eco-terrorist is probably stirring up some shit here in Ukiah. Anyway. <clears throat> Species extinctions are obviously very important in the long run because such losses are irreversible and may have profound effects ranging from depletion of Earth's inspirational and aesthetic resources to deterioration of ecosystems and ecosystem functions and services, the strong focus among scientists on extinctions, however, conveys a common, impre a common impression that Earth's total biota, Earth's total web of life, is not dramatically threatened. <clears throat> and that we need not generate deep concern now. There you go. Um, thus, oh, this is talking about the myth that we can just put this on the back burner. Uh, <clears throat> Specifically, this approach looking only at extinctions for, for the very last, you know, animal has gone the way of the dodo bird. Specifically, this approach 
has led to the neglect of two critical aspects of the present extinction episode. Number one, the disappearance of populations, which essentially always precedes species extinctions, and two, the rapid decrease in numbers of individuals within some of the remaining populations. A detailed analysis of the loss of individuals and populations makes the problem much clearer and more worrisome and highlights a whole set of parameters that are increasingly critical in considering the Anthropocene's biological extinction crisis. Okay, uh, in the last few decades, habitat loss, overexploitation, invasive organisms, pollution, toxification, and more recently, climate disruption, as well as the interactions among these factors have led to the catastrophic declines in both the numbers and sizes of populations of both common and rare vertebrate species. And then they look at a few of these. Here's cheetahs, chimpanzees, African lions, giraffes. We could just go on down the list. Um, let's see, then they, they talk about, I've, I've mentioned this and they refer to it, this living planet index. The most recent living planet index has estimated that wildlife abundance on the planet talking about the total number of our fellow earthlings, just our, our fellow earthlings with backbones that we share this planet with, just the total number of our fellow earthlings with backbones uh, on the planet decreased by as much as 58% between 1970 and 2012. Uh, and then they talk about how their methods kind of differed uh, from that one, but they're coming up with pretty much the same bad news. Previous estimates seem validated by the data we present here on the loss of local populations and the severe decrease in the population size of many others. Um, so they break all this down, uh, they look at the International Union of Conservation of Nature, uh, you know, and talking about how the IUCN doesn't, they don't consider these, these tremendous crashes in populations of what used to be considered common animals, all the IUCN is looking at is these extinctions. Uh, so while the IUCN are great guys, it masks the problem. Uh, okay. By addressing these questions, you know, looking more at the population uh, crashes than just the species extinction, we conclude that anthropogenic, human-caused population extinctions amount to a massive erosion of the greatest biological diversity in the history of planet Earth, and that population losses and declines are especially important because it is populations of organisms that
that primarily supply the ecosystem services so critical to humanity. There you go. And then they, uh, good Lord, and then here we go. They dive in uh, to all of these various uh, illustrations. Good Lord. I, I mean, this is... Uh, This is, it, we're fucked, people. We're fucked. Uh, they go all over the world and break it down by area of the planet and take uh, a, a look at all these, you know, some various species. Uh, the proportion of vertebrate species decreasing. <coughs> Good Lord. Local population extinctions in mammals. And then they go through all of the different continents and the geographic ranges. Clearly, the extinction of mammal populations, although varying from species to species, has been a global population. No shit. Sherlock. Uh, particularly hard hit have been the mammals of South and Southeast Asia. Can you say palm oil? Where all, every one of the large bodies, species of mammals analyzed have lost more than 80% of their geographic ranges. The Cape and Sahara regions in Africa, don't forget Central Australia, the Eastern United States, and the Atlantic Forest in South America have suffered severely from populations, population extinctions. <clears throat> Using conservative estimates of current and background species extinction rates, it has been shown that Earth is now in a period of mass global species extinction for vertebrate animals, but the true extent of this mass extinction has been underestimated. There you go. Uh, Good Lord. Uh, again, guys, I'm just uh, <clears throat> jumping ahead. <clears throat> Our results show that population extinction in land vertebrates is geographically omnipresent, but with notable prominence in tropical species-rich regions. There you go. They break that down. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Let's let's sum all of this up. I'm just gonna jump as I say, I could be here for the rest of the day. So we're just gonna jump down to the bottom of this sermon <clears throat> to look at some conclusions. In sum, S U M in conclusion. By losing populations and species of vertebrates, we are losing intricate ecological networks involving animals, plants, and microorganisms. We are also losing pools of genetic information that may prove vital to species evolutionary adjustment and survival in a rapidly changing global environment. This suggests that even if there was not ample sign that the crisis extends far beyond that group of animals, today's planetary defaulation, defaulation, otherwise meaning the annihilation of animals, today's planetary defaulation of vertebrates will itself promote 
cascading catastrophic effects on ecosystems worsening the annihilation of nature. Thus, while the biosphere is undergoing mass species extinctions, it is also being ravaged by a much more serious and rapid wave of population declines and extinctions. In combination, these assaults are causing a vast reduction of the fauna and flora of our planet. The resulting biological annihilation obviously will also have serious ecological, economic, and social consequences. Humanity will eventually pay a very high price for the decimation of the only assemblage of life that we know of in the universe. <clears throat> Population extinctions today, today, October 8th, 2017, are orders of magnitude more frequent than species extinctions. Population extinctions, however, are a prelude to species extinctions, so Earth's mass Earth six mass extinction episode has proceeded further than most assume. The massive loss of populations is already damaging the services ecosystems provide to civilization. When considering this frightening assault on the foundations of human civilization, one must never forget that Earth's capacity to support life, including human life, has been shaped by life itself. When public mention is made of the extinction crisis, it usually focuses on a few animal species, hundreds out of millions known to have gone extinct, and projecting many more extinctions in the future. But a glance at our maps presents a much more realistic picture. They suggest that as much as 50% of the number of individual animals that once shared Earth with us are already gone, as are billions of populations. Furthermore, our analysis is conservative given the increasing trajectories of the drivers of extinction and their synergistic effects. Future losses easily may amount to a further rapid defaunation of the globe and comparable losses in the diversity of plants, including the local and eventually global defaunation driven co-extinction of plants. The likelihood of this rapid defaunation lies in the proximate causes of population extinctions, all of which get back to overpopulation, of course. So from the umbrella of overpopulation, let's break it down. Habitat conversion, climate disruption, over-exploitation, toxification, species invasion, diseases, and potentially large-scale nuclear war, all tied to one another in complex patterns and usually reinforcing each other's impacts. Much less frequently mentioned are, however, the ultimate driver of those immediate causes of biotic destruction, namely human overpopulation and 
continued population growth and over consumption, especially by the rich. These drivers, all which trace to the fiction that perpetual growth can occur on a finite planet, are themselves increasing rapidly. Thus, we emphasize that the sixth mass extinction is already here, and the window for effective action is very short, probably two or three decades at most. All signs point to ever more assaults on biodiversity in the next two decades, painting a dismal picture for the future of life, including human life. Thank you, Brother Paul. Amen. Brother Paul and uh, who are these other two guys? Brother Paul, Brother Gerardo, and Brother Rodolfo for uh, pointing out this inconvenient truth. Guys, uh, two decades, my ass. It's over. It's over. We are a bunch of drowning rats on a sinking ship. And with that uh, cheery way to start out my day, I'm going to head out into this absolutely spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times when my little dog gets back from his walk uh, to take my gas sucking truck through the lovely Florida wine country, no doubt. I will have some rants from that scenic drive through paradise in the end times. Smoke them if you got them. We are so fucked. Bye, guys. <laughs>